Hello again everybody, this is John and Glenn with BestPriceNutrition.com. Um, today we're going to cover creatine, um, specifically some of the uh, myths about it, some of the, you know, not only effects but side effects as you know you'll hear it, which is more of a marketing term, it's, it's actually an effect, but, you know, side effect just means effects that the company doesn't intend or whatever. Exactly. But, well anyways, with creatine there's a lot of um, rumors out there and things like that which have been unfounded and creatine's been on the market since 1992. Yeah, yes, it's ninety two. So it's, it's one of the longest running supplements, and to this day, I think uh, evidence shows it's the most effective it's performance probably, enhancing supplement. Yeah, it's there probably is. the most studied supplement. Yeah, there it is. definitely is. Yeah, I mean they've gone further than just studying it for its athletic benefits. I mean now they're looking into other areas for the brain. The brain. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean creatine, you can get it from. You want to just go over some of the sources? Uh, it, it's in it's in uh, beef, steak, um, any uh, red meats. I know it's uh -huh. contained in. Um, Salmon. Oh yeah, it's in salmon also. Uh, it, it's found in, in meat essentially. Yeah. And also your body produces it. It's produced yes. in the liver, the kidneys, and the pancreas, so it's endogenous. So sometimes people say, oh, if I take creatine, I better get off of it because I'm going to stop producing it. Well, you get it from mm -hmm. exogenous sources and you produce it, so it's not a concern. No, it's no. not like taking testosterone. Where you're yeah, you don't, you're not going to shut, shut down your creatine production at all. I mean, it's always going to be there. Do you want to give a brief summary on how creatine works? Yeah, essentially uh, you, you have your natural source of energy in the body called ATP, which is adenosine triphosphate. Um, and what creatine does is it, it, you also, excuse me, you also have ADP in the body, which is adenosine diphosphate. Creatine lends a phosphate group to that adenosine diphosphate and you get ATP, adenosine triphosphate, which is your uh, energy source, a stored energy source in the body. Um, so that's where creatine is beneficial. It, it helps you with energy, providing energy. But it's not, uh, a lot of times you say, hey, it helps with energy. People think, oh, is it like a caffeine jittery type energy? It's not. It's, it's not something that you're really going to get a big rush of, uh, of uh, kind of feeling from. So Yeah, and it's, it's, it's something you're, so your body can recycle the energy within the muscle because, you know, as your body breaks down ATP, it becomes ADP, ADP. and then the separate phosphate and creatine can help. Restore it, and it's a really, really quick reaction. And like you said, it's not something you feel right away. It's no. something that actually has to saturate in your system. That's where the whole loading thing came into uh, became in vogue. And it turns out not to be. You don't have to load. You don't have to load. A, a lot of the research at the beginning, they, all they knew was loading because they knew it had to be saturated. But now they're finding that uh, you don't have to load it. Um, you you may not get the the big boost of effects right away. Uh, but the effects at the end of the eight weeks are just the same whether or not you load or not, or I should say eight to twelve weeks, whether or not you load or not. Yeah, and it's, it's you know, if you're, if with creatine, it's going to work, we were talking about before, it's a very fast energy system. It's not going to work with the aerobic system, for instance. It's going to work with the glycolytic and anaerobic systems. Um, it's specifically for fast twitch muscle fibers. So if you're going to take it and run a marathon or something distance, it's really not going to do much no, for you. not going to do much better. Um, you know, it might help you recover for your, if you do, that's not to say if you're training for a marathon, so you shouldn't use creatine or anything, but you can use it for like your sprint workouts and your exactly. lifts in the gym. That's where you're really going to feel the effects of creatine because, as we said, it's going to work on those fast mm -hmm. systems. So if you're running a 100 meter sprint or any explosive like lifting, power lifting, things like that, that's where you're going to feel the benefits from creatine. And, you know, to put it in context too, we talked about red meat being a source. It's about two pounds of red meat is going to give you about five grams of creatine. So that's a, to put that in context. Um, Forms of creatine. Yeah, you know, essentially creatine um, starts off as a, a, the base creatine phosphate, and then they bond it to different salts to sort of help it uh, absorb or, or be uh, uh, more bioavailable to the body. Um, creatine monohydrate is, is the probably the most well-known, the most studied form of creatine. Um, there is uh, creatine, uh, I've seen creatine, uh, ben uh, creatine magnesium, Magnesium creatine chelate. Chelate. That's what I'm okay. looking for. Sorry, Sorry. I, I didn't know. Yeah, what you're there's, there's so many different forms of creatine that they all get kind of mixed together. Um, there's uh, creatine ethyl ester, uh, crealkaline creatine. Those are some other sources, other forms of creatine. Mm -hmm. And again, it's just things bonded to the creatine to help it to either be stabilized or be absorbed by the body. Um, and essentially, you know. As it all boils down, creatine monohydrate is the one that, as they've done peer-reviewed research, that shows that it, it's uh, the best form or the, the far superior form. Than the There's other. nothing wrong with creatine monohydrate. It works. It absorbs well. It's cheap. That's the one yeah, I mean, you should go with. Um, and, again, we touched on the energy systems. I, I think I misspoke. It's, it's going to work 
with the phosphagen system, which is your really, really short burst. I, I, you know, I have like a little chart here that we put together, which this is available on our blog. Um, there's a blog that we did uh, back last year, creatine and beta alanine, a match made in heaven. And we discuss like a five yard sprint, like when, when creatine or beta alanine are helpful. So this particular article is about creatine and beta alanine, but we go in depth about creatine. And we talk about what energy systems you're using. You know, you're using the phosphagen system when you're using 100% uh, power output because you need that energy available right away. Um, 100 meter sprint, it's predominantly the phosphagen system. And then you get like 60%, you're talking like a 200 meter sprint where you're, you're using predominantly the glycolytic systems, so you're using glycolysis, but you're also starting to get on that edge of where you, it might become somewhat aerobic, you know, mm -hmm. kind of like that 400 meter run is really kind of the threshold sometimes you'll see. Because um, the other rate limiting factor with, you know, fast twitch muscle fibers is the buildup of lactic acid. If you've seen our other videos, we'll talk about beta alanine and get into that. And that's, that's kind of the new supplement that's kind of with creatine in terms of a lot of research validating how effective it is and they work together well so yes. if you want to read more on that we have that in that particular blog. Um, the biggest thing with creatine that's come out with some of the myths now is that people would go and they'd get uh, blood work done and they'd hear about their creatinine levels. Mm -hmm. Well the byproduct of creatine is creatine. So if you're on more creatine well your creatinine levels it's are going to be, be higher. Yeah. Exactly. You know if you're going to go get a test done obviously know that your creatinine levels are going to be higher because this is getting broken down and the byproduct is creatinine. And the thing is is what they never failed what they failed to test initially was they would look at blood and they'd say oh wow look at all the creatinine. They never tested the urine. Well they went ahead and tested urine and found the expected amount in the urine which showed that the kidneys were processing it properly. Exactly. Um, that, that was the big, big concern initially that came out with creatine. People like, oh, it's going to liquefy your kidneys. If you don't have any prior kidney conditions, then you'll be fine. You can get your, you know, you can do a standard test for kidney function. It's the GFR, or glomerular filtration rate is what they're going to look at and see and make sure that your body is getting rid of the creatinine fine. So if you don't have any kidney issues, there's no, there's yeah. none, there's no concern. And like I said, the supplement's been out since 92, mm -hmm. 93, give or take, you know, a year. Yeah, cre creatine is a large molecule, so yes, it does have to pass through the liver and kidneys, and, and, you know, people say, oh, it's too much stress in the kidneys. If, like John was saying, if you don't have any pre-existing kidney conditions, you're okay. It was the same with high-protein diets, yes. the thought was. Exactly. I mean, there's absolutely zero, zero empirical evidence to show that. And as you said, even the AMA has discussed creatine and the effects of it on mental focus mm -hmm. and you know abilities to study better the and brain, think sharper. You know, for Alzheimer's, MS now. So they're, they're really yeah. starting to really research it and see where else it can help benefit. Um, I, I think I've read somewhere like in the 2000 Olympic Games that almost every athlete, like the high percentage of the athletes were on it, especially those that were in the you know sprint type competitions. So um, there was no issues with that either. So the creatine's kind of become a victim of its own hype and popularity because it's such a good supplement everyone tries to come out like you were talking about all the different forms yeah yeah it, 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 they kind of all get meshed together because essentially ours won't bloat you and this and yeah, that which is, uh, they won't bloat no water no holding water and, and sort of the idea behind that was uh, you would take uh, creatine with a large amount of carbohydrates to get that insulin spike and then that insulin would shuttle the creatine into the muscle cells and four times a day people yeah. are sucking down cell tack or oh if you imagine 75 grams of sugar four times a day that's what 290 grams of sugar. Oh, that'll blow you because of the sugar. Right so right. that was the problem. People mm -hmm. are, oh, I'm sucking. Well, that's all the sugar. It's not like, oh, the creatine's doing. It. And also, you need the water that you retain inside of the muscle cell mm -hmm. for creatine to be effective. That causes intracellular tension, and that water draws everything into the cell, which is what you mm -hmm. want. It causes an anabolic effect. I mean, that's that's part of the idea. So the notion that our creatine doesn't bloat you. It can be summed up as there's probably not any sugar in there. It has nothing to do with the form of creatine. And if yeah. yours isn't helping you hold that water in the muscle cell, well, then it's not doing its job. It's just nonsense. So, Yeah, a lot of times we'll get uh, emails or phone calls from customers saying, hey, I'm dieting, uh, what should I take? And, and a lot of times, you know, creatine is something that's good to take while dieting also because it can help you preserve that muscle mass, keep you uh, your energy levels high. And again, like John was saying, it's not something that's going to bloat you. It's that 75 grams of sugar that you take along with that. So that's always something to, uh, to yeah, monitor. Yeah, that's some marketing. Some of the, yeah, the, oh, our, our creatine won't do this, and ours will do that, and, you know, no loading phase. And, you know, we cover the loading phase. We cover the notion of bloating. I mean, that, that's, a, that's a sugar yeah. thing. Um, so that's, I mean, that's, that's mainly it. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think if we have any other questions on it. Yeah, There's I There's so much we can do. I mean, there's so many peer-reviewed studies on creatine that it's just... Uh, yeah. yeah, as it boils down to, it's one of the safest supplements. Uh, I mean, it, 
generally, like John was saying, only if you have a pre-existing kidney condition would you not want to take it? Or, or, yeah, or there's a lot of things that you shouldn't take if you have a pre-existing exactly. kidney condition that you, you probably have to monitor how much protein you take. I mean, everything. Mm -hmm. So that's different. If you're of complete health, you know, there's no issue. And if somebody's out there on some goofy website saying that creatines liquefying kidneys and stuff, okay, I'm sure. Because that's in the best interest of these companies, exactly. to liquefy your kidneys, because yeah. then you'll return and buy more. That's, that's great. And, it's, and as we said, there's plenty of research, human research. So um, and that's, that's that. So if you guys have any questions or comments, you know, you can find us on Facebook. We're on Facebook now, facebook.com slash bestpricenutrition. You could also post your comments in the comment section of the video or on our blog. And again, the blog that we referred to in this video is called Creatine and Beta Alanine, a match made in heaven, and that's at bestpricenutrition.com slash blog. Thank you. Thank you.